Hi everyone, welcome to the RPB Resonance Chemistry. Now let us continue our lectures on electrochemistry. I think this is the part number four, lecture number four. In previous videos, I had uploaded like uh, many of the uh, basic parts that is uh, electrolytic conductance and uh, those related terms, molar and equivalent conductance, those variations as well as relationship. Now in this session, we will discuss the like those continuation lecture, the cold rush law of electrolytic conductance, especially cold rush law for weak electrolytic conductance. Okay, now let us go through the topic. Now here, cold rush law. So the cold rush law is nothing but equivalent conductivity of an electrolyte at infinite dilution. Equivalent conductivity of an electrolyte at infinite dilution. That is a simply infinite dilution. Is the sum of ionic conductance of the cation and anion by the electrolyte at infinite dilution. At infinite dilution. Now let us uh, discuss the, those uh, those part in equation model. Now here. So this is the an uh, electrolytic equivalent electrolytic solution at infinite dilution that indicates the infinite dilution. Now here it is any electrolyte. So here it is made up of one cation and uh, one anion. So which is nothing but so here a solution either A B or A B two or A two B. So those type of solutions are present. Okay, those type of electrolytes are the solutions in this case uh, electrolytes. Okay, so now here it it produces one cation and one anion. Definitely it produces one cation and one anion. So this is the ion. So which ion having the some conductivity? Those ions uh, conductivity is called as ionic conductivity. Okay. Now let us imagine here it is the cation conductivity plus anion conductivity, cation conductivity and anion conductivity. So these are the ionic conductivity. So according to the definition, these are the like uh, sum of the cation and the anion conductivity, sum of the cation and the anion ionic conductivity, which is nothing but equivalent conductivity at infinite dilution, at infinite dilution itself, it indicates it is the infinite dilution. So uh, uh, that doesn't, uh, doesn't mean whether it is a represented or not of the ionic solutions. Okay. Now here, this is the simplest representation of uh, cold rush law. Okay. Now here, this is the ionic, ionic conductance of cation. So simply, which is uh, nothing but a K into like a uh, UA. K into UA. So here U is called UA, U is called ionic mobility of cation. So here C, so U C ionic mobility of cation. So in similarly, lambda anion, that is ionic conductance of anion, which is equal to the K into UA, K into UA. Here UA is called ionic mobility of ionic mobility of yeah, yeah. okay now here k is nothing but a constant that is a one faraday so so k is equal to faraday that is equal to the 96500 coulombs 96500 coulombs so these are the values so which is nothing but a, a simplest uh, representation of cold rush law so for example let us imagine so the equivalent conductance of HCl, which is equal to the, the equivalent conductance of HCl at infinite dilution, whether it is strong field or weak field, it is applicable for both. Okay, at infinite dilution of uh, HCl, electro, uh, elect equivalent conductance of HCl at infinite dilution, so which is equal to the so ionic conductance of cation plus ionic conductance of anion ionic conductance of cation and uh, ionic conductance of anion. So this is the sum of the cation and anion ionic conductance which is equal to the like equivalent conductance of corresponding electrolyte. Okay. So sometimes, uh, so we will take the like this type of, uh, this type of electrolytes. Here it is the like coefficients are different. So those type of uh, uh, electrolytes having the like, uh, I'll give the very simple representation, very simple representation of these uh, these type of electrolytes simply here it is ax and by type of electrolyte these type of electrolytes okay now i'll give the very simplest uh, representation equivalent conductance at infinite dilution of ax by is equal to now here so this is the bottom part so ax the sufficient x indicates here the number of ions of the a so the number of ions of the a into so its conductance if only one molecule one one of one mole of uh, a is present then one one molecule so if two uh, two ions is there it, then it is a uh, two ions if three ions is there then it is three ions okay now here lamb l a x x x indicates the number of ions of a present now here this is the lambda ionic conductance ionic conductance of a okay so first of all a followed by the 
B that is uh, first of all cation so that cation having the charge uh, opposite side that means uh, A X B by this is the crisscross method crisscross method of the oxidation state uh, A plus Y okay plus the sum of the ionic conductances okay now here B the number of times of B present is Y number of times Y the equivalent conductance of B so here it is the minus X here it is the minus X this is the simplest representation of a cold rush law this is the simplest representation now let us uh, let us uh, take the one or more examples so now here the equivalent conductance of BaCl2 is equal to so here Ba is only one one mole is present one mole of equivalent conductance of Ba so now here Ba uh, oxidation state is plus two okay now uh, basic video I'll upload the oxidation states now if you watch the basic video that is clear for that okay now here now two moles of chlorines are there two of Cl minus two of Cl minus this is the like a, an equivalent conductance which is nothing but I, so the sum of the ionic conductance of Ba plus 2 and 2 moles of chloride ion ionic conductance. Now let us take the Al2 SO4 taken thrice. Okay, lambda Al2 SO4 taken thrice at infinite dilution. So here is nothing but 2 moles of Al plus 3, Al plus 3 plus 3 moles of equivalent conductance of SO4 minus 2. So this is the representation. Okay, so these are the very basic representations regarding to the cold rush law. Now I'll explain them those applications of the cold rush law. Okay, now let us explain the applications of cold rush law. Now, let us discuss the applications of cold rush law. Here it having the mainly four applications. Before going to the four applications, now we will discuss the very basic point of the cold rush law. Okay. So now here at infinite dilution, at infinite dilution, so ions will get uh, like a completely dissociated. Okay. So ions completely dissociation takes place. So in case of complete dissociation, each and every, each and every component are dissociated as uh, like ions. Okay. So that case, each ion can contribute the the parts of uh, its conductance towards the equivalent conductance or molar conductance towards the equivalent or molar conductance so that's irrespective of the adjacent atoms and that case irrespective of the adjacent atom so now the equivalent conductance of uh, like a lambda uh, like a kcl so here it having the like a k, k plus and cl minus the equivalent conductance of the like a kbr so which is nothing but a k plus plus Br minus the equivalent conductance of a K iodine so the K plus iodine minus the equivalent conductance of a CH3COO K so the K plus and CH3COO minus so in these four cases here the four cases the lambda K plus lambda K plus lambda K plus is common okay so here are adjacent atoms adjacent anions are different you know here Cl minus here Br minus here iodine minus here acetate minus okay so whatever the adjacent atom whatever the negative or positive part so here the ionic conductance of specific ion whatever the position or whatever the other part it is common for that it is common for all uh, so all the cases uh, the ionic conductance is common so that is the main thing regarding to the our cold rush law okay now let us go through the applications of cold rush law okay now the first application determination of lambda m equivalent at infinite dilution equivalent conductance of uh, lambda m at infinite dilution at infinite dilution okay so for weak electrolytes definitely here it indicates uh, at infinite uh, for weak electrolytes for weak electrolytes okay now so in previous case uh, by the extrapolation method so we will find the like extrapolation method here it is the like uh, extrapolation graph for the strong electrolytes we will get we will observe the uh, small variation but uh, in case of weak electrolytes we will observe the rectangular hyperbola so in this case here we will find the 
like at infinite dilution solution, equivalent conductance at infinite dilution. But in case of weak electrolytes, we cannot uh, find the extrapolation method. We cannot find the equivalent conductance at infinite dilution by the extrapolation method. Okay, that's why the alternative method can develop by the cold rash. So with the knowing compounds, uh, with the help of uh, knowing compounds, we can find the unknown compound of weak electrolyte equivalent conductance at infinite at infinite dilution. Now let us let us calculate the those di those equivalent conductance of weak electrolytes. Okay. Now here we know that uh, CH three COOH is an equal uh, like a weak electrolyte. So now we want to find the equivalent conductance at infinite dilution of corresponding acetic acid. Okay. We don't know the direct method. So in case of extrapolation method, we, we, we cannot find the these these type of weak electrolytes uh, infinite solution, infinite dilution, at infinite dilution with the help of uh, like a uh, Knowing compounds, uh, the equivalent conductance of CH3COONA. Now, the equivalent conductance of HCl. Now, the equivalent conductance of NHCl. So, with the help of uh, knowing compounds, knowing strong electrolytes, we can find the unknown weak electrolyte equivalent conductance. Okay. Now, let us calculate the those unknown uh, those unknown compound formula. So, now the first of all, we need uh, CH3COO minus and H plus. So, here the lambda CH3COOH indicates the equal ionic ion of acetate ion conductance of acetate ion plus the conductance of H plus ion the conductance of H plus ion so now we need these two ions whatever the case in according to our basic information whatever the case so each and every ion it is common for the all the cases irrespective of the other compound okay now we need CH3 COO minus which is available in sodium acetate so that's why we will add the like a uh, sodium acetate that is a CH3 COO minus plus Na plus CH3 COO minus plus Na plus again we need the H plus again we need the H plus so it is common for the HCl so Ionic conductance of H plus and ionic conductance of Cl minus. Okay, now here we required the, our required compound CH3CO minus and this H plus is uh, available. So here CH3CO minus and H plus is available, but here Na plus and Cl minus is over. That means it is not our requirement. So that's why we will subtract the, those Na plus and the Cl minus value. So here with the help of NaCl, we will subtract the, those, those ionic conductance of Na plus and Cl minus. Okay, so this is the method. In this me these type of methods, which are helpful for the uh, finding the equivalent conductance of uh, weak electrolytes uh, at infinite dilution. Okay, now here we know that uh, like uh, equivalent conductance of CH three COO Na plus equivalent conductance of HCl plus equivalent conductance of minus equivalent conductance of NaCl, which is the better method to find the these type of uh, weak electrolyte equivalent conductance at infinite dilution. Okay, so it is very very important method for JE as well as NEET students. Okay, it is very useful method for the CSAR and GATE aspirants. So, so don't forget it. It is very, very, very helpful method. So at the ending of, ending of video, I'll solve the two or three problems regarding to the, this method. This is the first application. Okay, now let us go through the second application regarding to the our cold rash line. Okay, now let us discuss the second uh, second application regarding to the cold rash law. Now here the second application here with the help of cold rash law we can find the degree of ionization degree of ionization for weak electrolytes of weak electrolytes. Okay, so weak electrolytes indicates here the C in previous case C H three C O O H. It, it, it can dissociate it into CH3COO minus plus H plus. So here it is the 100%, it concentration is 100%. Uh, it is weak electrolytes, it can ionize it into very small quantity, very small extent. Uh, that is maybe like 10% or below 10%. Here it can uh, extend, uh, the, the extension of, uh, sorry, extent of ionization is 10%. Uh, below 10% that is very uh, small quantity okay so that small quantity of ionization so here small quantity is ionized okay the small quantity of ionization which described as the degree of ionization which is described as degree of ionization degree of 
ionization. That means uh, the degree of ionization of weak electrolytes, which is nothing but a degree of ionization, which is denoted as alpha. Okay. So now here, the degree of dis uh, ionization, which is nothing but, uh, so alpha is equal to equivalent conductance at any concentration by the equivalent conductance at infinite solution, at infinite dilution. Now here, lambda m by lambda m, here it is in, at any concentration, here it is the infinite concentration, infinite dilution. At any concentration, uh, here it is the infinite dilution. Infinite dilution means at zero concentration, at zero concentration. Sometimes uh, they are represent the lambda m by lambda m infinite. So both are the same, doesn't matter, okay? So this is the second application. With the help of uh, uh, like uh, equivalent conductance of uh, equivalent conductance at infinite at any concentration by equivalent conductance at infinite dilution so we know that the infinite dilution equivalent conductance in the previous method so lambda m by so like lambda and lambda cat n plus lambda n n so this is the another method sometimes they are given in the like a lambda cat n and ionic ionic conductance of cat n and n n so then find the those type of a uh, degree of ionization okay so that the uh, those type of questions are accepted in like a J means and neat questions that's why it is also very helpful okay now let us discuss the third factor that is the solubility of sparingly soluble compound sparingly soluble compound Okay, so solubility means whenever a salt having a salt which is dissolved in the water, that means upon dilution it becomes a so it becomes a solution. So at at a certain certain stage it having the saturation that is called saturated solution. So saturation means uh, now here it is the uh, a salt. So whenever we will add the water, or we have the like liquid that is the solution. Okay, so this is the an electrolyte. Whenever we will add the like salt over there, so some of the at the at a certain stage here it, it completely dissociated. Whenever so another another mole of salt is added or another gram or another milligram of salt is added, which is available in precipitate. So before that point, so before the formation of a precipitate, uh, so that is called a saturated solution. That is called a saturated solution. So now here saturated solution is nothing but salt plus salt plus water so now here with the help of these five these equation now the k salt is equal to the equilibrium constant of the salt is equal to k saturated solution plus k water so here minus k water minus k water so here it is the k salt is equal to k k saturated solution minus k water so this is the very useful formula Okay, so based on these formula, uh, they are given in the CSIR 2018 net. Okay, so don't forget this type of problem. Okay, now here K water is nothing but conductivity of water, conductivity of water, conductivity of water which are used in the like a saturated solution which are used in the preparation of saturated solution so this is the very useful method okay so with the help of this method we can determine the solubility of sparingly soluble compounds uh, solubility of sparingly soluble compounds now we know that uh, equivalent conductance equivalent conductance is nothing but uh, like a uh, x x into like lambda plus a cation simply it is cation plus anion cation plus anion the ionic conductance of cation as well as anion here it having the certain like a certain cation solutions and anion solution which is represented so many types doesn't matter okay so with the help of these two formulas we know that uh, the equivalent conductance equivalent conductance at infinite dilution which is nothing but a kappa constant into thousand by concentration thousand by molarity or concentration of the sparingly soluble salt so here it is the cm Okay, CM is equal to concentration of the sparingly soluble salt. Concentration of the sparingly soluble compound, arc soluble salt. So these values substituted over there, then we will get the like a la lambda CM is equal to lambda M is equal to K into thousand by CM. Okay, here CM is equal to K into thousand by lambda M at infinite dilution lambda m at infinite dilution with the help of this formula we can find the sparingly soluble the determination of a sparingly soluble salt so here it is the sparingly soluble salt concentration so here it is the sparingly soluble salt 
sparingly soluble salt concentration soluble salt concentration this is the third application regarding to the like our uh, cold rashla now let us discuss the final application that is a weak electrolytic theories that is the fourth application Okay, now let us this is the fourth application that is a determination of ionization constant. Determination of a ionization constant for weak electrolyte. For weak electrolyte. Okay, we know that weak electrolyte means in previous discussion, weak electrolyte means it ionizes into small extent. That small extent ionization is described as ion, uh, like degree of ionization. In that particular case, uh, those ions and uh, un unionized part, uh, they both are uh, equilibrium to each other. They are they both are appears as equilibrium to each other. That kinetic equilibrium is called as ionization constant. That kinetic kinetic equilibrium is called as ionization constant. That is ionization constant are represented as a K. So this is nothing but a ionization constant ionization so constant so with the help of uh, these ionization constant we can find them those values okay now let us discuss the a b which can dissociate into a plus and b minus a plus and b minus at the starting so the concentration of a b is a c so now at the, at the starting point the concentration of cation and anion which is zero okay now after a cert certain time here it is the it loss of a certain concentration that is a c alpha it lost the like a, some some quantity that is a, which are described as alpha degree of ionization so it which uh, lost the certain concentration alpha so whatever the loss here it is appears c alpha and c alpha it appears as the cation and anion so whenever the cation and anion will becomes the like a, a neutral compound okay so now here uh, at equilibrium concentration so k is equal to equilibrium so at equilibrium concentration that is the concentration of a product by concentration of reactant so that is the equilibrium constant okay the concentration of a b so now let us uh, substitute the, those values so a plus is equal to c alpha so b minus is equal to c alpha by a b is equal to c minus c alpha so c minus c alpha into c alpha c square alpha square by c come uh, whenever we'll uh, we will keep the c as a constant uh, now one minus alpha 1 minus alpha so now c c square is cancelled now we will get the value like k is equal to like a c alpha square by 1 minus a c alpha 1 minus alpha this is the like a weak electrolytic solution which is also called as like a dilution law for Ostwald dilution law Ostwald dilution law so the, let us assume here it is the equation number one so with the help of a uh, degree of ionization lambda m by lambda m at infinite solution so we will substitute the, these value over there now we will get the like k is equal to c into lambda m by lambda m so simply at infinite dilution which is different uh, which is denoted as a, uh, lambda m naught doesn't matter so by one minus lambda m by lambda m naught lambda m by lambda m naught now here c into lambda m square by lambda m naught square by so now here lambda m minus lambda m naught minus lambda m so whenever these values are substituted over like this so now we will get the like c into lambda m square by lambda m naught square okay whenever the bottom fraction will goes to the numerator then the fraction is reversed the fraction is reversed now lambda m by like lambda m naught minus lambda m lambda m naught minus lambda m okay here it is the lambda m lambda m naught i think sorry so here it is the lambda m naught so here lambda m naught square is cancelled now we will get the k is equal to c into lambda m square by lambda m naught into lambda m naught minus lambda m so the equivalent conductance at infinite dilution sometimes they are represented uh, like a zero or sometimes they are represented the infinity so both are the same so this is the like uh, which is the useful formula for the finding the or determination of the degree of ionization of uh, weak electrolytes degree of ionization of uh, weak electrolytes with the help of equivalent conductance so which is also called as Ostwald dilution theory Ostwald dilution theory dilution equation okay so this is the Ostwald dilution equation whenever we will uh, rearrange these equation so uh, now we can plot the graph uh, like uh, 1 by lambda m versus uh, cm cm naught that is a 
1 by lambda m into c m lambda m naught. So we will plot the graph, we will get the like a straight line that is nothing but Ostwald dilution graph. Ostwald dilution graph. Now let us uh, <coughs> rearrange the equation. Now rearrange the equation. Okay, so now we will get the 1 by lambda m naught is equal to 1 by lambda m is equal to 1 by lambda m naught plus like c lambda m by so here it is the k into lambda m naught square k into lambda m naught square so after the rearranged we will get the, this type of uh, this type of equation so if you need the, this uh, derivation now i'll uh, give the those derivation in uh, like a uh, in comment box as a pdf okay now here the which seems to be y so we are so x is equal to c into lambda m so here it is the m so here it is the like intercept c so now 1 by lambda m is equal to 1 c into lambda m so this is the x axis this is the y axis whenever we plot the this type of graph we will get the this type of straight line so here it is the intercept that intercept is called that intercept is nothing but lambda m naught okay so this is the Ostwald dilution graph graphical method Ostwald dilution for weak electrolytes with the help of graphical method we will find the those lambda m naught value that is this intercept so we know the intercept value so that is uh, that will use the lambda m naught that is uh, equivalent conductance at infinite dilution equivalent conductance at infinite dilution we can find the our equivalent conductance value at infinite dilution with the help of Ostwald dilution method these are the four important methods regarding to the like a determination of equivalent conductance of weak electrolytes okay now let us solve the some of the problems regarding to the this type of cold rush law Okay, now let us solve the previous year CSAR and uh, J E mains need problems. Now here the second question is a net 2011 question. The fourth question is a 2018 December CSAR question. Okay, so uh, remaining are uh, very easy, uh, very like low level J E mains need questions. Okay, now let us go through the first question. The equivalent conductance of NaCl, HCl, and sodium acetate at infinite dilution. They are given the certain values. Now the with the help of those values, uh, then find the acetic acid equivalent conductance at infinite dilution. So they are asking about acetic acid infinite dilution solution equivalent conductance of acetic acid so in our uh, like a theoretical a theoretical case uh, now we'll discuss the same example so they are given in the ch3coh so that means we required a ch3coh minus ion conductance as well as h plus conductance so the ch3coh minus conductance uh, which is available from the ch3coh na okay plus so again the h plus conductance which is available from the hcl plus the NaCl conductance, uh, the minus of uh, NaCl conductance are uh, subtracted from that. Okay, now here sodium acetate, the final one is a sodium acetate value is 91.0, that indicates lower conductance, uh, that's why the lower value. Now HCl, it is a higher conductance, that is strong electrolyte, very strong electrolyte, uh, so that having the like a uh, 426.16 uh, minus uh, the NaCl value, NaCl value is like 126.45. 126.45 so from this equation we will get the like equivalent conductance of acetic acid at infinite dilution now the values uh, let us uh, add the values now here 71517 minus 126.45 so now here like uh, 126.45 the 517 1.6 126.45 approximately we will get the 390 point uh, something 390.71 so this is the values 390.71 like ohm inverse centimeter square equivalent inverse so this is the first first problem very easier problem okay now with the help of uh, these these problems we will solve the now the second question that is a uh, net 2011 question net 2011 question the question is the molar con conductivity of Na2SO4 sodium sulfate potassium sulfate potassium chloride hydrogen chloride as well as the sodium form sodium format at 300 kelvins are they are given in the, those values now with the help of those values let us find the like a uh, equivalent conductance of formic acid so they are asking about a uh, equivalent conductance at a uh, infinite dilution formic acid so now equivalent conductance means we required uh, the uh, ion of uh, 
like uh, HCO minus the ionic conductance of HCO minus and ionic conductance of uh, H plus. So what we need to find these values now here HCO minus what we required HCO minus that means uh, sodium phosphate sorry sodium uh, is it uh, sodium format HCO NA plus now again we need uh, like a, a certain CL value the certain H plus value so H plus which is available from the like HCL. So we we know that these two values but uh, these two values are subtracted uh, which these two values the value of these two sum subtracted by the subtracted now NACL okay the NACL value subtracted from the sum of these two values sum of these two values that means that now we require the NACL so but they didn't given the NACL value they didn't given the NACL value that means uh, here interlinked questions interlinked questions again we required uh, another mode of uh, for find uh, another mode of identification now here NaCl so in case of NaCl requirement uh, they are given in the equivalent conductance of Na2SO4 plus again we required Cl so that means uh, they are given in the like KCl so which is subtracted from the like uh, K2SO4 which is subtracted these two values this K2SO4 subtracted from the sum of these two values okay now here they are given in the two two sodiums now we required only one sodium that's why we'll take the half of these two values half of these two values now half of Na2SO4 the first value Na2SO4 is a 260 okay plus KCl that is the third value that is 150 minus half of K2SO4 value K2SO4 is the second value that is 308 308 here it is a 130 plus 150 minus 154 so here approximately 126 so here it is the like lambda equivalent conductance of NaCl value okay we know af after uh, finding the NaCl value let us substitute uh, let us uh, subtract the, those values so sodium format sodium format value is approximately 105 so here for the funding of a formic acid value so sodium format is 105 plus so HCl hydrogen chloride value is 426 whatever the so whatever the question HCl value is always 426 in previous question also HCl value is 426 minus NaCl value is 126 so 426 minus 126 approximately 300 so not approximately it is exact value 300 plus 105 405 so 405 those are the units the Simons so centimeter inverse mole inverse okay these are the units now the option here 405 is correct so uh, they are given in the four options among the four so 405 is the one of the option okay so these are the second question solution now let us go through the third question very easier method okay now let us solve the third question the equivalent conductance of uh, n by 10 that is a decinormal solution decinormal solution of acetic acid at 25 degrees centigrade temperature is 14.3 ohm inverse centimeter square centimeter square equivalent inverse calculate the degree of uh, dissociation okay the degree of the ionization or degree of the dissociation both are the same so now we know that degree of dissociation formula lambda m by lambda m naught okay that means at equivalent uh, like uh, at infinite dilution it is the at any concentration at any concentration so they are given in the certain concentration value so that is the 14.3 now with the help of infinite dilution value that is 390.71 so in previous case we, we will discuss we will solve the those problems that is the equivalent conductance of acetic acid okay at that value that is 390.71 so the same value which is uh, substituted here now we will get the 0 0.366 so whenever this is the value whenever these values convert into percentage that means uh, into 100 0 0.366 into 100 approximately 3.66 percent so here the content of uh, degree of uh, dissociation is a uh, 3.66 percent 3.66 percent this is the like a third question now let us go through the final question that is a 2018 CSAR question 2018 December CSAR question very easier question Okay, four marker question which is given in the very simple topic, very simple topic. But uh, many of the students they didn't attempted these type of questions in CSAR. Okay, now we'll let us solve these pro these type of problem. They are given in the conductivity of water. So they are given in the like water KW. So conductivity of water and saturated solution of the like a K cause K saturated solution saturated solution. So they are seven and twenty one seven and twenty one. Okay, so they are given in the particular values uh, mu into 
Simon's meter inverse. Okay, Simon's meter inverse. They are given in the particular values mu into Simon's meter inverse. Okay, so these are the values. So with the help of uh, like a saturated solution and water, we can find the K salt. So in previous case, we will discuss the like a saturated solution formula is equal to K like a K salt like a K salt plus K water. So in case of water is K salt is equal to K saturated solution. So here these two are the different saturated solution minus K water. K saturated solution minus K water. So they are they are given in the saturated solution 21 minus K water is 7. So we will get the 14 mu Simon's meter inverse. So the finally they are asking about uh, the solubility, the concentration of solubility in mole meter point minus 3, meter power minus 3. They are given them, they are asking about particular values. That's why we will convert the these these values into a particular Simons and meter inverse. Okay. So 14 microns it converts into like a particular Simons values. Micron Simons to Simon value is Simon 10 to the power minus 6 into Simons and meter inverse. Simon's meter inverse. So this is the like a K saturated value. Now next next one is they are given in the certain values. Okay, they are given in the like a certain values of the ionic conductance. With the help of ionic conductance, we can find the like a those value. So they are given in the like salt AB2. So AB2 can dissociate it into like A plus A plus 2 plus 2B minus 2B minus. So they are given in the like a K value that is a lambda equivalent value. So here ionic conductance of A plus 2 like a ionic conductance of 2B minus 2 moles of ionic conductance of 2B minus. So lambda A plus is 12.72 plus lambda B minus is a 7.64. Here it is the 2 moles 12.72 plus that is a 8. 12 like it is a uh, 13.28 so approximately 13.28 12.72 approximately here it is uh, equal to the 13 plus 13 26 here the value is uh, like not the 13 here it is the 15 okay 15.28 approximately it is equal to the 28 so 28 they are given in the values meters Simons meter in meter square mole inverse milli Simons meter square mole inverse. Okay, so whenever these values also converted into Simons 28 into 10 to the power minus 3 the milli values converted into Simons that is minus 3 into Simons meter square mole inverse meter square mole inverse Okay, now the final uh, the final thing is uh, the finding of the like a concentration of the saturated solution here it is the equivalent conductance of the salt which is equal to the K by C which is equal to the K that is K is equal to kappa. Okay, now we will find the K salt constant conductivity of the salt. Okay, so in case of uh, like a uh, equivalent conductance K into 1000 by C now here they are given the moles uh, the K lambda salt is equal to K by 1000 into like solubility concentration can convert it into like a solubility of the salt uh, that is uh, SAB2 solubility of AB2 1000 into solubility of AB2 they are given in the values now with the help of these values we can find the SAB2 is equal to K by 1000 into lambda salt equivalent conductance of salt so now let us substitute the, those values so SAB2 is equal to so KAB2 that is nothing but K salt is equal to 14 point 14 into 10 to the power minus 6 by 1000 that is nothing but 10 to the power 3 into lambda equivalent 28 into 10 to the power minus 3 28 into 10 to the power minus 3 here 10 to the power 3 10 to the power minus 3 will be cancelled now here SAB2 is equal to 14 14 into 10 to the power minus 6 by 28 so 14 ones are 14 twos are that is 1 by 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 so 1 by 2 is nothing but 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 6 here 5 into 10 to the power minus 7 10 to the power minus 6 0 0.5 we can shift the power point value to the right side then here the negative charge will be increased so here 5 into 10 to the power minus 7 meter per liter okay mole per liter this is the concentration so whenever mole per liters can convert it into mole per milliliters so 5 into 10 to the power minus minus 7 by so mole it can converts it into meter cubes then here it is uh, subtracted by the 10 to the power minus 3 10 to the power minus 3 so this is the liters can convert it into meters okay so those values can convert it over there so now we will get the 10 to the power minus 4 mole 
here meta power 3 can shift it to the right, uh, right side can shift it to the right uh, like a numerator then it becomes minus 3 so here mole meta power minus 3 mole meta power minus 3 the solubility concentration of SaB2 value is 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 into mole into meta power minus 3 meta power minus 3 that's all for this video this is very helpful I think it is very helpful for the like a very basic student to higher level student so this is the very useful video regarding to the like electrochemistry. Thank you so much for watching.